So it took me some time, but I finally got around to watching Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. And believe me, I wasn't pushing this off because if you've been watching my channel, I have been hyping this series ever since I found out that it was coming out. And Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is probably one of my favorite movies from my teen years. As if I recall, it came out when I was still in high school. But even so, it was still amazing and I could still watch it now. It would not get old because I just love the action fighting choreography in that movie. And I mean, when I finally got done watching Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, I mean, I had to say, the movie, the show was pretty epic. It was amazing. It has a lot of good things, though it does have some flaws here. But the real question is, does it live up to the live action predecessor? So I'm sure fans of this, uh, this fan of this fandom already know pretty much the story of Scott Pilgrim, but if you're not, the simple premise is that Scott Pilgrim is actually based off a graphic novel, and both the graphic novel and the movie and this series all follow the same plot, that Scott Pilgrim, who is a slacker and bass player for his indie band called Sex Pop Bombs, his whole world is turned upside down when he meets the girl of his dreams named Ramona Flowers. And before their relationship can really get kicked off, he has to basically battle what are known as the seven evil exes, who were seven former relationships that Ramona Flowers had. That's pretty much the premise, and I don't really want to go too in-depth with it, because I don't want to give off any spoilers, but I will say that the plot of this series is very different from what we're used to seeing from the Scott Pilgrim franchise. I'm going to go ahead and get into this now, since, you know, I'm talking about the plot here. This is the biggie when it comes to, like, the flaws, but I'll get more into the other flaws later. But since I'm talking about the plot here, I'm going to go ahead and get into this flaw, and that is that even though it is Scott Pilgrim takes off, Scott Pilgrim himself is actually not there 50% of the time. I mean, first episode, it's almost like Scott Pilgrim versus the world just in animated form until we get to this, like, very end of the episode. And then after that, it's all Ramona Flowers. Basically, it should have been called Ramona Flowers takes, takes off because almost this whole show is seen through her perspective. I mean, that was a gamble and a risk to take since they were basically were taking Scott Pilgrim pretty much out of the show to like the very end. But it was a risk that really paid off. Seeing it from her perspective gave a really big expansion on the universe because she's spending a lot of time trying to find him. She's meeting her exes again and she's talking to Scott's friends. It gives us a bigger expansion on the Scott Pilgrim universe and actually brings more life to the other characters that we didn't get in the movie. We get more from Wallace. We get more from Knives. I mean, that that and all the others. Young Neil. I mean, it just, it just gave it a really big expansion. I liked that perspective. It gave more love to the characters. And that's something I can really get into. They had so much love for these characters in the show. And I'm not just talking about animation-wise and them grow and them growing and everything because we'll get into that too as well in a little bit but they had so much love for them that they actually got the original people who played these characters in the movie to voice the same exact characters that's showing some love that they actually wanted the same exact people back and not bringing in new characters at all or new actors or actresses at all and you get what i'm saying but the point i'm trying to say here is that every single one of them brought their a game like they never left the set and of course the ones i'm most impressed with of course is michael Sarah and mary elizabeth winstead i mean you know how there are some actors and actresses you say that you see them and they were born to play this part kind of like with ryan reynolds with deadpool or harry potter daniel radcliffe they were born to play those roles michael Sarah is Scott Pilgrim and Mary Elizabeth Winstead is Ramona, Ramona Flowers. I mean, they they just brought their endgame like they never left the set. And goes the same thing for the rest of the cast. Perfect job. The animation as well was also on point. Props and praise to the animators who animated this show. I mean, I will always love the action choreography we got from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. It was like how they started introducing the video game concept into a live action film. But this one actually felt like this animation was not... It felt like 
they brought the graphic novel to life. Like we were actually, if we were looking at the book, this is actually what it would look like if it like was popping out of the pictures. So, I mean, the point I'm trying to say here is that it had its own taste. I mean, we still got that video game vibe like we did in the live action film, but it was better and more cartoony. Also, even like the analog sounds, like it was a Nintendo game. So props that, praise to that. I mean, great job on the animation. Now, though, I've been talking about the positives of this show, and yes, it has a lot of praise for it and deserves a lot of praise. It doesn't mean it doesn't have its flaws. And mainly, the main flaw, like I said, that I was talking about was 50% of the time Scott Pilgrim wasn't there. And in that turn leads to another flaw, was the fact that since we're looking at the view of Ramona Flowers, we're not getting a little growth for Scott Pilgrim. Because in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World... It wasn't just about him fighting these exes and, you know, just getting the girl of his dreams. It was about him growing as a person and changing. And by taking him out of the show for that much, I mean, it kind of like takes away that concept. There's not really a lot of growth happening for Scott Pilgrim since he's not there. So, I mean, in turn, even though I like the perspective of seeing everything from Ramona Plow Flowers' point of view... It also takes away a certain perspective away from the Scott Pilgrim movie that we didn't get in this series. Another flaw that I, well, I don't think I really want to consider this a flaw. This is just a personal, more of a personal opinion of mine that I would say that that I missed that was actually in the live action flick that we didn't get to see here. And that's kind of like the cluelessness concept with uh, Scott Pilgrim. I mean, how he was kind of slow on the upbringing here and there like he never caught he it took him so long to catch on i liked that vibe it was funny in the movie and i really wish we could have gotten that here in the series but like i said he wasn't there half the time so i mean there was that concept kind of missed but i mean that's more of a personal thing i mean i'm pretty sure there were some out there who didn't feel like we probably needed that concept or there are some out there who wish we had gotten it but, I mean, I'm not going to consider that a flaw. I'm just saying that's a personal opinion that I wish we could have gotten more of. Aside from personal opinions where I wish we had gotten more of something, the only two flaws I saw with this show is the fact that Scott Pilgrim wasn't in it majority of the time, and also that led to his growth being dropped down a bit. But, I mean, other than that, everything was spot-on perfection, definite praise for this show. So, I mean, I am a bigger fan of the movie, I will say that much. But, I mean, this show is also great. I mean, it doesn't fall short. It definitely follows the predecessor. You can kind of call it a sequel in a way because after the first movie, everything else, you know, kind of like coalesce. I mean, not the first movie, first episode. Because that basically was the movie. And then until the very end, and then that's when everything started to change. If you haven't watched any of the Scott Pilgrim franchise, it's definitely something I highly recommend. Because I definitely it's, believe it's something that's enjoyable for people of all ages. So that just about wraps up this review. You don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. But before I go, I just wanted to say that I won't be dropping again till Friday. And hopefully that's going to be my Napoleon review. Because I've been raving about that movie just as much as I've been raving about this Scott Pil Pilgrim TV series. And I just want to also say thanks to all of you who have come to support me. That's something I'm very thankful for. Since it's Thanksgiving, I want to say what I'm thankful for. And that's thank I'm thankful for all of you who have come to support and subscribe and comment, like my videos and my channel. Because I wouldn't be here without you guys. I wouldn't have anything or any of this without you guys. And that's something I'm grateful for. And I hope you come to enjoy my videos in the coming years and the coming months that when I will be dropping new content. So very thankful. Thanks to all of you. And happy Thanksgiving.